Who was the absolutely horrific Dark Lord of the Sith that taught Darth Plagueis? Why was he possibly one of the most evil Sith Lords that had ever lived? And why was his death so terrifying and horrific that it turned out to be one of the most grotesque and unsettling moments in all of the Star Wars mythos? Lord Plagueis was one of the most prominent members of the Rule of Two, coming in behind that, of course, of Bane and Sidious. Plagueis was one of the few Sith Lords that actually got his own novel and expanded works. Plagueis would make him quite famous, or perhaps infamous due to his very contrarian views on the Force and the Sith Order. But more than this, Plagueis being the Sith who actually discovered how to cheat death. But every great and powerful Dark Lord starts somewhere, and where Plagueis began was with his own master, a master named Darth Tenebris. We only ever directly encounter Plagueis' master in the very first chapter of his novel. Everything we learn about him is told in retrospect and from other sources. But like all Sith, we have found Tenebris to be quite unique in both his approach to the dark side as well as his grand plan, which was different from Plagueis's. A plan to completely decimate the Jedi. But beyond this, his fate left us absolutely speechless. So my friends, let's discuss the life and character behind Darth Plagueis the Wise as we examine the deeds of Tenebris the Cruel. The being that would become Darth Tenebris originally went by the name of Rugus Gnome before he was given his Sith name by his master. We don't know much about his life prior to Sithhood, or even who trained Tenebris other than it was a male Twi'lek of an unknown name. But what we do know is about the grand plan that Tenebris and his master concocted together. It would be around this generation of the Rule of Two when the Sith were beginning to sense the completion of the grand plan. And in the coming generation, or perhaps even this generation, the Sith would again gain control of the galaxy. This was a very pivotal moment for the Rule of Two, as they had spent centuries gaining power, but they now had to decide how to wield that power how to interweave all the spies and connections in the Republic in order to topple it completely. Something that later Plagueis and his master would find in common was that they both had an aptitude for science. At this point in history, the Sith had comfortably began integrating their normal daily lives into their pursuit of the dark side and its knowledge. This was yet another way how the Sith had evolved past the Jedi. No more were they religious zealots trying to fight a war of strength of numbers or combat ability alone. Rather, Tenebris' generation of Sith had embraced the fact that while they were indeed still Sith, they had become very powerful members of society as well. In the future, Sidious would use the dark side in tandem with his political stance to topple the Jedi for good. And as a banker, Plagueis would start financing certain political bills in the Trade Federation. This ultimately would result in a spark that would conclude in the Clone Wars. But with Tenebris and his master, they believed that somewhere within their grand laboratories was the key to the Jedi's undoing. Tenebris' plan was to concoct a virus that they could unleash on the Jedi Order. The idea behind the virus was that it would infect the Order and cause a pandemic only among Force sensitives, with the result either concluding in death or the pathogen severing the Jedi from the Force. To me, this seems like a drastic and a terrifying prospect. The idea of a Force-based bioweapon is horrendous, especially one that threatens to sever anyone from the Force entirely. Luckily for the Jedi though, though the experiment was ultimately a failure and was never seen to completion, it would be some time after this, or perhaps because of this, that Tenebris no longer saw his master as useful and therefore removed him. After taking the mantle of the Dark Lord for himself, Tenebris began manufacturing machines and weapons of terror, believing that one day, technology would simply render the Force obsolete. He believed that he could grow so powerful that he would no longer need the Force at all. By strength of military might and super weapons, Tenebris would take the galaxy by storm. The Force would finally be surpassed. How arrogant of him. Tenebris, in fact, became fascinated with the prospect of growing beyond the need for the Force. Unlike nearly all the Sith that came before him, Tenebris refused to believe that the Force was some sort of all-encompassing, all-powerful entity. He didn't particularly like the idea of the Force as it was written by the Sith and Jedi alike. His logical mind refuted the idea of something so mystical and out of reach that he could never fully control it. As time went on, Tenebris decided to use the Force as a useful energy source to be used to fuel his experiments, an ideology that we have seen passed down to Darth Plagueis, the two of them being some of the most arrogant Sith in the entire timeline. 
Reading the passages in Plagueis' chapter in the Book of the Sith will explain how he truly viewed the Force, which we can apply to Tenebris and how he viewed it as well. They didn't truly believe in the will or the mysticism of the Force at all, with Plagueis not believing in Sith spirits. Because of this, they did grow powerful, but this arrogance ultimately stopped them short of what they truly could have become. I believe that the dark side decided to keep certain secrets from Tenebris and Plagueis because they did not respect it entirely, unlike Sidious who would come later, who gave massive respect to the Dark Arts. When Plagueis visited Korriban, all of the Sith spirits refused to commune with him because they believed he was a heretic, unworthy of even their presence. A surprising revelation that had it not been Sidious to get the Sith back on track, the Sith very much were falling away from who they were meant to be. But back to Tenebris and his personal life. Darth Tenebris would continue his persona as Rugus Gnome and be a lead engineer designer of some of the best and most luxurious starships that the galaxy had ever seen. This made him extremely wealthy and put him in the place to become great friends with the head of the intergalactic banking clan, an individual by the name of Car Damask. Tenebris sensed that Car had a good amount of force potential and midichlorians within him, but just falling short of what Tenebris was looking for. Tenebris, though, also knew of another moon, a female, who too was reasonably gifted in the aptitude of the force. Desiring for the two of them to create a powerful force-sensitive offspring, Tenebris manipulated the moons into having an affair which resulted in the spawning of one Higo Damask. Later on in the young boy's childhood, Tenebris convinced Carr to let him take the boy on as a protege, but in truth, this was the training of what would one day result in Darth Plagueis. At first, Tenebris trained Plagueis quite classically, to the point where his aptitude with the Force, as well as his skill with the lightsaber, was quite impressive and beyond any Jedi Knight of the time. Although both Master and Apprentice regarded the lightsaber as more of a homage to a bygone era and became skilled with it more so out of tradition than anything else. Although Plagueis would remember that Tenebris would enjoy a good sparring match and that the two would spar often if nothing more for entertainment for the Dark Lord. Through these sessions, Plagueis grew to understand that he was a generational talent with the blade and that at a very young age was encroaching upon his master in skill with the lightsaber. But as always, this meant nothing to Tenebris. It was the intellectual pursuits of the dark side that he cared about, and this too grew to be Plagueis' obsession. By now, the race to immortality among the Sith had become more emphasized with them sensing the unfolding of a grand plan. Any one of them could be the final Sith Emperor to rule eternally. Although their plans had been delayed for centuries, a ray of light had presented itself to them. One dark night, Tenebris had a vision that the Chosen One of the Jedi Prophecy would soon make himself known to the galaxy. Terrified that this Chosen One would hunt him down, seek him out throughout the stars, and destroy him, in a desperate grab for life itself, Tenebris came up with a plan. His first step was an issue with Plagueis. He knew that his apprentice was growing in power and needed to seek out another apprentice that would be more subservient to his will. He appreciated Plagueis to be sure, but he needed an apprentice that was perhaps less ambitious and willing to serve as his right-hand man rather than succeeding him as the Sith Emperor. Tenebris then began the training of another young Bith, who he named Darth Venomous. He then began researching his own method of immortality behind Plagueis' back, creating something known as the Maxi Chlorians. This went unnoticed for months, and Darth Tenebris' plan nearly came to fruition. But Plagueis would turn on him in a moment that he least expected. On a trip to the planet Baldemnik, Tenebris and Plagueis went inside the mines to search for some Cortosis ore. Along the way, though, one of the mining droids had suddenly exploded having been sabotaged by an unknown assailant. Tenebris managed to contain the explosion with the Force, but while he was focusing, Plagueis caused the ceiling above him to collapse, crushing Tenebris under large stones. As he lay dying, he was hit with the revelation that would be followed by pure rage. It was Plagueis that had betrayed him. At the very beginning, he was proud, even impressed with his apprentice's cunning, but his pride quickly turned to an utter loathing. The rubble had destroyed the very ship that the two Sith Lords had arrived on, leaving Plagueis stranded on a world that required him to wear an Enviro suit, a world where he could very likely be killed. Plagueis had risked the entire future of the Sith just to kill Tenebris. 
Tenebris would meet his physical end as Plagueis approached him and then snapped his neck, displeased with his master's sour reception. This would have been the end for Tenebris had he not completed his experiment. His own pseudo-version of essence transfer had been enacted, and using his knowledge of the failed virus, Tenebris created a new virus that contained the Maxichlorians. The best way to describe what a Maxichlorian is, is to call them something like artificial vessels for force energies. By using this virus, he had preserved his consciousness within the Maxichlorians, and as they left his body, they fled to the closest living thing, the body of Darth Plagueis. And completely unbeknownst to Plagueis, his master would live within him. But in order to do this, Tenebris had sacrificed something precious, his ability to sense the motion of the future. The master had believed that he would no longer need this, as his future was certain. His ultimate plan was to possess the prophesied chosen one whenever he was discovered, perfecting essence transfer, and doing so when the chosen one was still very young and unable to resist the Dark Lord. This would give Tenebris access to a body with a historic amount of midichlorians, and therefore, ultimate power. Ironically, Tenebris had bet everything on the powers of the Force. As his physical body died, Tenebris entered his apprentice's body and slipped into his very cells, infecting them with his Maxichlorians. But as the infection spread, Tenebris again gained access to Plagueis' powers of foresight, and in this single moment, he discovered and felt Plagueis' own death at the hands of his apprentice, who Tenebris could only see as a smear of darkness. The vision horrified him, and now knowing that Plagueis would die soon, leaving Tenebris unable to fulfill his ultimate goal, he began to panic. Tenebris decided to escape Plagueis' body to think about a way out, to discover a new path. But as he exited, he discovered his own mummified remains. Time had passed, possibly decades, centuries even. But Tenebris had been unaware of it all. He then wondered if his foresight, instead of being eliminated, had been twisted in upon itself forcing him to endlessly relive his own death. It was all a cruel joke. Tenebris had finally acquired immortality, but not as he had wanted. Now trapped in an endless loop of death, Tenebris's consciousness still lives on in this hell, a hell of his own creation, without even a mouth with which to scream. And so, this was the life and ultimate failure that was Darth Tenebris. But my friends, we certainly would like to know what you think of the Sith Lord. Do you believe that he had the potential to become one of the greatest Dark Lords in history? Or was he simply misguided, unworthy to ascend as the Sith Emperor? Let us know your thoughts on this controversial and powerful Sith Lord in the comments down below. And as always, may the Force be with you.